Hello everybody and welcome to this new video from Bicotic. Today I'm revisiting a video that I made in 2017 where I looked at five popular budget road bikes. This video has had well over 100,000 views and people have asked for an update. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to see how inflation has affected what you can get for your money. So back in 2017, I came up with this hypothetical chart trying to explain what performance differences you could expect depending on what sort of money you spent on your bike from the crazy expensive to the super cheap. Well, if you want to check that out, I'll put the link to that video down below. But for this video, I thought we'd do something a bit different. So what I did was I went to the Halfords website and picked out their cheapest road bike, which is the Apollo Paradox. Pretty snazzy coming in at 230 pounds and what I thought we'd do is just compare that back to back with specialized top of the range S works tarmac SL7 coming in at a staggering 11,500 pounds and in fact I think that price is about to go up quite considerably as well so if you fade between the two bikes and you showed this to someone new to cycling who didn't really know much about the difference between these bikes they'd probably think they look pretty similar and their comment would maybe be that the Paradox had a more comfortable seat it does look slightly more padded but if you showed them the price I think they'd probably have a heart attack when they saw that this one was £11,500 basically your deposit to your new house well what I thought we could do is have a quick game of top trumps to try and show the difference between these two bikes and yes when it comes to price the Apollo Paradox wins hands down and in fact you can get 50 of these to one S-Works after that it's all kind of bad news for the Paradox at 12.1 kilograms this is super heavy for a bike it's cheap aluminium frame and steel forks just can't compare with the full carbon S-Works frame and forks here. Likewise with stiffness, the S-Works is always going to win that one. In fact, a World Tour Pro could probably bend this bike in half with the amount of power they put through it. Developed in a wind tunnel, the S-Works is always going to win the arms race in the aero department. Rolling resistance, well, the turbo cotton tires on here cost pretty much half the price of this entire Apollo bike. These are going to roll a lot faster than these nasty cheap tires here on the Apollo. Geometry wise, this bike has won a zillion Pro Tour races and is developed with the pros. And then equipment, well of course the S-Works is coming with the top of the range Shimano Durace Di2 electronic shifting group set. I say top of the range, this has actually been updated just recently by Shimano, but you're looking at 11 or 12 gears there, whereas the Apollo is coming with a seven speed super cheap group set. So the S-Works is gonna go faster all day long for less power, but boy is it coming at a cost. It's super expensive. However, these bikes are at both ends of the spectrum and in the middle, we have various price points depending on how much you wanna spend, which leads us to the budget of this video and it's approximately 1K UK pounds. I get everything off UK websites. Apologies to my overseas viewers. So the first thing I wanted to look at was that manufacturers have a large choice of group sets that they can choose from to put on these bikes. And as an example, I've taken the rear derailleur, which is a pretty important component on a group set. And I thought we'd just have a quick look at the pricing here and the weights. So a top of the range Durace Di2, 564 pounds for this little piece of kit that hangs off the bottom of your bike in the rain and the muck but it is 11 speed and it shifts electronically or you can come down here to the Shimano Claris 8 speed mechanical cable operated 23.99 and 80 grams heavier so there's a huge price difference between the two and if you imagine that can extrapolate throughout the whole group set depending on which components the manufacturers decide to use and in this video where we've got a thousand pounds to spend we are mainly down here 105 Tiagra Sora and Claris Something that you would have noticed just lately is that Shimano have released their new Dura Ace and new Ultegra, both 12 speed. I haven't seen any pricing yet, but it does seem like the mechanical top end group sets are being phased out. It really is worth getting your head around the different group sets available from the different manufacturers because they do kind of dictate quite often the price of the bikes that you're looking at and the manufacturers will do some crafty stuff where they'll say it's a 105 group set and then they'll put some cheaper components on like crank sets and stuff like that so it's worth understanding all this and if you'd like to see a more detailed video about group sets and pricing of group sets 
then leave a comment down below and let me know. Okay, so back in 2017, here was the bike that you could buy from Scott, the Speedster 10, an aluminium bike with a 105 group set. Back then, this bike retailed for £999. Fast forward four years to 2021, and this is now the bike that Scott are offering in that price category. This is the Scott Speedster 40 disc, and as you can see, if we fade between the two, they are now fairly different. It's a good looking bike. Cables are tidied away in comparison to the old one. And we've clearly gone to disc brakes, albeit cable operated disc brakes, which for me personally, I'd rather have rim brakes than cable operated disc brakes. However, if you do buy this bike, you do at least have the option of upgrading to hydraulic discs, but that is pretty expensive. Now, again, if we have a quick game of top trumps between the Speedster 40 from 2021 and the Speedster 10 from 2017, as we can see, we've got the same price. But the 2021 offering from Scott is clearly actually quite a big downgrade from what we could get for our money in 2017. Topping the scales according to the website, presumably this isn't a typo, it's incredibly heavy at 11.2 kilograms. I mean that is a blunderbuss. Also to cut costs I guess Scott are supplying this bike with aluminium forks unlike the carbon bladed forks we had in 2017. We've also dropped down from the Shimano 105 from 2017 all the way down to the Claris 8 speed and we obviously talked about the mechanical disc brakes. So all in all I think this bike looks nice but that's a pretty big downgrade from what we could get in 2017 for our money and in fact looking through the Scott website the Speedster 10 is now retailing for 1649 so that's an inflation in price of 650 quid however that bike is coming with hydraulic disc brakes but is also scarily heavy at 10.07 kilograms scarily heavy i think maybe i'd stick with my uh, 2017 version so next up giant in 2017 i looked at the contender sl1 that's what your thousand pounds would buy you back then rim brakes aluminium frame and a mostly 105 group set fast forward to 2021 and now you're looking at the contend ar4 we can see quite a big change in the geometry there it's quite a bit slacker and longer we've also gone to disc brakes cable operated again that bottom bracket's a lot lower isn't it like something heavy landed on it so if we put them side by side again 999 999 and for these bikes i think i remember getting the weight off the japanese website certainly for this 2021 version i did and that's a medium versus a small so slightly hard to say but still pretty heavy at least it's a little bit lighter than the scott again we've gone from 105 11 speed down to 8 speed claris and again mechanical discs looking on the giant website the contend sl1 is now 1249 so that's an inflation of 250 pounds that's the rim brake version that they're still selling and if you want the disc version that's 1649 okay so what about the trek offering it was the damane alr3 in 2017 and back then my biggest complaint about the trek was how awful their photos were dreadfully compressed and blurry on their website actually now trek have some really good photos on their website so fair play to them for upgrading that anyhow this is what you got back then and checking through the website now for that kind of money you're looking at the Damani AL3, not the ALR3. Not entirely sure what the difference is there. We definitely had some kind of ISO speed decoupler on the 2017 version. Maybe that's what the R stands for. If you know, let me know down in the comment down below. But now the AL3, that's just a weld there. Now there's, there's no little rubber inserts there. Geometry looks pretty similar. And again, we've gone to cable actuated disc brakes. So pop them up side by side. The ALR3 was a thousand pounds back in 2017. So that's a pound more than all the other ones we've looked at. Today in 2021, the price is 1,050 pounds. So this is a little bit up on what we've looked at so far. Same weight as the Giant that we just looked at. A little bit heavier than what it was back in 2017. Again, it's a heavy bike. And it appears that we've got the same spec group sets, nine speed Sora. So the big difference is the mechanical disc brakes. I had a look on the, the Trek website and I can't see a current version of the ALR3. So I've got no price to compare that against. So over to Specialized. And this is the LA Elite. And this is the bike that we looked at in 2017. I remember saying at the time then that this was a good looking bike. And I stand by that. I think it looks good. I think it looks clean. Rim brake, drop seat stays. We've got the Praxis crank on there. It's a smart little bike. I'd like this. So 2021 version. Oh. 
it's pretty similar. The spec looks almost the same. It pretty much looks like the same bike, just with a slightly different paint scheme. Fading between the two, the, the geometry looks different, but I'm sure that must just be the photo. Let's get them up side by side. Same price, 999. Couldn't find a weight for the 2021 version. Not entirely sure where I got this weight from on the 2017 version, because Specialized never list their weights. I must have trawled the internet for that. But we could imagine this was pretty similar. A bit heavier because we've gone down to the Sora 9-speed group set, whereas before we had the 105. Apart from that, all pretty similar. If we look at the 2021 Specialized LA Elite, it's 1249, so up 250 pounds. No disc brake version available unless you go up to the LA Sprint version of this bike, which is a completely different bike. I don't know why they call it an LA as well, really. Alrighty then. Last but not least, it's the Canyon Endurace AL7. This is what it looked like in 2017. Aluminium bike. 105 group set it even got the 105 crank nice so what can you get for that kind of money now well it's the Endure 6 remarkably similar looking bike and this is way back when Canyon used to shoot all their bikes against black contrary to everybody else they've now changed it so that they shoot against white as well you got the fancy dancy Movistar race team paint job if that's your thing we're still rim brake Bucking the trend there. So let's get these puppies side by side. And we've got a bit of a price hike here from the 999 that we had in 2017. Up 100 quid. But we've dropped down to Tiagra from the 11 speed 105 to the 10 speed. That's taken us from 8.4 kilos to 8.7. Which actually in this group of bikes isn't terrible is it? It's certainly not like the Scott over 11 kilos. So apart from the drop down to Tiagra everything else seems pretty similar. And looking at the 2021 Canyon Endurace AL7 we're looking at an inflationary price increase of £350. So that's quite a lot really, isn't it? So that's it. We've had a look at all the bikes. And what was the conclusion I came to in 2017? The Canyon came first. The Specialized came second. I gave that best looking bike, which I think is probably fair enough. The Giant came third. Scott came fourth. The Trek was fifth, not just because it had a poor quality picture, but also it was the heaviest out of the group. So after looking at the 2021 bikes, what's the new conclusion? Well, this is what I came up with. In first place, it's the Canyon again. In second place, it's the Specialized again. The Trek has moved up to third. The Giant has moved down to fourth. And the Scott sadly is all the way down in fifth place now. Like I say, even though it's a good looking bike, it's hidden the cables. That weight is just killer. The Canyon and the Trek I've put in red here because they are slightly above our budget. And actually with a thousand pound budget, a hundred pounds is actually quite a good hoik in the price. So you make your mind up on that. And I think the Canyon takes it because it's Tiagra 10 speed and the Specialized is 9 speed. Again, the Giant and the Scott have dropped down because they're both 8 speed. So there we have it. That's my thoughts. If I was looking to buy one of these, I think that's kind of how it would pan out. I'd be quite torn between the Canyon and the and the Specialized. I do probably actually prefer the look of the Specialized. But Tiagra is not a bad group set. Anyway, here's a leaving thought I would thought I'd give you before I left this video. Back in 2018, for some reason, I wrote down the price of a four pack of baked beans and it was £2.75. A Warburton's medium slice white loaf was £1.05 and two pints of milk was 85p. Back then, the top of the range tarmac was £7,750. Now we're in 2021, I collected these prices again and amazingly, a four pack of beans you can now get cheaper at £2.50. The bread's gone up a tiny bit, two pints of milk, 5p cheaper. So that's a reduction in price of 5.88%. So not great if you produce milk because all your other costs will have gone up so that's that's pretty miserable for you and then we come down to the tarmac and like I say I think these prices are going up again for 2022 but currently standing at £11,750 that is a 51.61% increase in price so specialised the same thank you very much really aren't they that's humongous so there we go I thought I'd leave you with that there's some other numbers there if you want to look at those oh one other thing 
I've been watching the Tour of Britain this week. Really good race. Britain's obviously a cool place. Now the slight problem I have with it is I pay Eurosport a yearly subscription to watch bike racing and I take it a bit for granted now but Eurosport allow you to watch it without any adverts. However the Tour of Britain gave the rights to the race to ITV4 for the UK which means I can't watch it on Eurosport and the adverts are killing me. Like I say not having adverts on Eurosport I've totally taken for granted now but watching ITV4 every 10 minutes it's adopt a dog, adopt an orca, adopt a donkey, adopt some cats. Pay for your funeral. Pay for your cremation. It's like, oh my gosh. There's two stages of the Tour of Britain left to go and I'm not sure I can take any more. If you're listening, which of course you're not listening. Next year, please give the rights of the Tour of Britain to Eurosport. That would be much appreciated. Thank you so much. And if you like this video at all, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps it grow. And as ever, comment down below and let me know of any videos that you would like me to make. Always interested to hear. Till next time.